Yeah, I'll react to that, sure. Thank you, Wildman, for the recommendations. I really want to know this one first, so that, that's what we're going to do. Nope, not there. How does stealth work? It's a short video. I might do a second one, depending on how many questions I have and, and how long it is. So preemptive like, real engineering, awesome channel. Uh, let's go. Northrop V2 Spirit. I think it has some that looks damaged. I think it has something to do with the angle the angles on the plane. But I know it's really expensive to uh to make a an airplane very stealth. I heard it it it, it gets to the point where on a radar it, it, it lo just looks like as if it, it, it has the cross-section of, of a B. I really don't know what I'm talking about, so let's get started. Let's learn. Hi, the original link, top description, Discord below that. would love to have you. The B-2 the B2 Stealth Bomber is probably one of the most iconic planes to have ever been built. Its sleek flying wing design makes it practically invisible to radar and incredibly fuel efficient, allowing it to penetrate even the most sophisticated of enemy defenses. But how did this incredible aircraft come into existence and what technological advancements made it possible? The rise of stealth aircraft can be tracked back to World War I, when the Germans attempted to use transparent canvas to make their planes difficult to spot. That plan backfired as the glossy canvas made the aircraft even more visible in sunlight. The demand for stealth aircraft as we think of them today rose with the advancement of practical radar technology in the... Hold on. I thought that radar was a big breakthrough in world war ii it, it was such a big breakthrough that that um it, it stopped the domination of the atlantic by german u-boats i i thought i heard that before but it was around in world war one the 1930s think of them today rose with the advancement of practical radar technology in the 1930s the technology formed the backbone of britain's early warning system during the battle of britain saving uncountable lives from German bombing runs. Let's see how the technology works. Radar works by sending short pulses of electromagnetic energy in the form of radio waves outwards. The antenna then switches to receiver mode and waits to detect the reflections of these radio waves off distant objects. The radar now receives a blip on the screen called a radar cross-section, and it's... See, guys, question. So if, if, if there is nothing in, in the area that the radar is sent to, then when it goes to receiver mode, it will not get anything back. So it only gets something back if it hits a target. Tana then switches to receiver mode and waits to detect the reflections of these radio waves off distant objects. The radar now receives a blip on the screen called a radar cross-section, and its size changes with the magnitude of radio waves returning to the antenna. The radar cross-section is a measure of how detectable an object is with radar. The size of the object is just one factor, which can be mitigated with clever engineering. The B-2 has a 52 meter wingspan, yet it has been reported to have the same radar cross-section as a large bird. So how does the B-2 manage to achieve this incredible feat? The core concept behind the B-2 is reflection. It was designed to reflect the radio waves away from the source so that they never get the chance to be detected. What is amazing is that every okay. surface of the B-2 Okay, so it doesn't it doesn't like escape from slip through the waves. It just it de it deflects them in a way so that they can't they, it doesn't return. That's has the chance to a be big detected. thing I learned. What is amazing is that every surface of the B2 has been designed with this in mind. The aircraft was designed with the aid of computational models and a supercomputer, which resulted in an incredibly complex curved shape. This technology was not available during the development of the F-117 Nighthawk, resulting in its much simpler faceted flat panels. The B-2's radar cross-section is further reduced by its streamlined flying wing design, with its highly reflective engines embedded within the aircraft, where radar cannot see it. Even the engine's air intakes and exhaust vents are located on top of the plane to ensure they cannot be detected by ground-based devices. But the flying wing has some unique flying characteristics that took many years for Northrop to perfect. One of the most notable is the lack of a tail rotor to control yaw. The B-2 instead uses split rudders on the tips of the left and right wing. They act as air brakes to slow either side of the wing and cause a yawing motion. 
but when in use, the split rudders can increase the radar cross-section of the plane, so the B2 can also use differential thrusting of its left and right engines to allow it to be controlled when stealth is a priority. Beyond its shape, the B2 is also made with advanced composite materials, which are capable of absorbing and dissipating incoming radio energy. The exact composition of the B2 is classified, but we know that the skin is made from a carbon fiber reinforced plastic, while the leading edge of the B2 is lightly painted with a material which contains small particles of iron, which absorb electromagnetic energy and converts it to heat. With these technologies combined, the B2 barely even registers on radar screens. What is even more terrifying to think about is the fact that the Nazis had created a very similar plane all the way back in 1944. The Horton 229 incorporated many of the same principles as the B2. How were the, the Germans in World War II so far ahead on rot rocket technology? We even had to steal their, their rocket scientists after the war. The Horton 229 incorporated many of the same principles as the B2, long before the stealth technology that made the B2 possible was fully understood. Today, we can only imagine the impact this plane would have had if it was ready before the war's end. Yeah, but they'd have to be mass produced, right? Thanks for watching and welcome to all my new subscribers. Thank you for making. Um so, the thing is, when it said it had the cross section of a large bird, my main my main thing is, well, how large of a bird? Because, yeah, it, it say say it's of like you know the largest bird, but couldn't you know where what birds are? Just knowing by the which birds live in the area and. Uh, migration patterns of certain birds and the time of year it is to know that if a object comes up from your radar that looks like a large bird well yeah it doesn't look, but isn't that at least at the very least going to put up your alarm bells and be like um yeah it might be a large bird but we also know that it's a strange object. It's a strangely large. So I'm wondering how large, because I feel like that would be a big difference. Especially if not a lot of large birds, not a lot of large birds live in the area they're radaring. Also, uh, I imagine, so, so they put it through a computer, right? Which found the optimal shapes needed on a plane to avoid radar detection as, or to create as small a cross-section as possible. But then you still have to make it fly. And so I'm assuming that's where a lot of the hard part comes into it and the cost is just making sure it is flight-worthy while also keeping all of the computer image, computer-designed shapes and that's fascinating how it it it, def it doesn't kind of it doesn't hide from radar it more or some of it does it more just kind of makes it so that the beams that go out are just not def are deflected and not towards the uh original satellite you know what i mean so that, that that's really fascinating and i i didn't know they had i thought radar was developed in world war ii so Had, if it was very interesting um because I, I remember seeing another video about uh more modern jets and how there are some jets that just forego the the, the um stealth detection and i think in favor of speed or something like that because I, I would think that when you find sorry guys if i'm boring you at this point thanks for watching but if you find if you computer generate the, the optimal shape of an of a workable flyable plane then isn't that isn't the money already then spent on how we, how to make it but then why is it so much more expensive when you already know really interesting i i think i'll keep this as its own video it was very cool i learned a lot and uh i'm going to watch another real engineering video on planes or a tank love y'all see you guys next time bye guys